question first? <laughs> Wait, they have opening statement first? Well, if they have opening statement first, then do we question first? No, it goes. Okay. okay. Yeah, it goes down, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta get back here. Good luck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Maybe shake hands. You know what time? Shake hands, Alright, go ahead. Okay, so three of us are arguing in favor of capital punishment. Uh, as we all know, capital punishment is the death penalty, which, as defined in the Oxford Dictionary, is the punishment of execution administered to someone legally convicted of a capital crime. Classifying a crime as capital means that it is considered one of the most heinous offenses, such as murder or treason. The death penalty is taken very seriously, and decisions such as this are not made lightly. The Stanford Law Review argues it would be morally wrong, it argues, if the death penalty does deter crime, it would be morally wrong for a state not to have the death penalty. If a state refused to impose capital punishment, they argue, it would effectively condemn numerous innocent people to death. States that choose life imprisonment when they might choose capital punishment are ensuring the deaths of large numbers of innocent people. Besides this, it also enforces the saying, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Legal executions in America have been happening as early as 1630. That's over 380 years of legal executions, and people still support it. A table in the book Criminal Justice in America, which is um, shows that in 2011, 61% of people polled were in favor of the death penalty, 35% against, and 4% with no opinion. The poll goes back to 1937 with numbers that remain fairly consistent. A Gallup poll from as recent as October 2014 shows a consist consistency with polls showing that people are still in favor of capital punishment with a 63% majority. Also, because DNA testing, less innocent people are being convicted. U.S. Senator Orrin G. Hatch says, Advanced DNA testing improves the just and fair implementation of the death penalty. While reasonable people can d differ about capital punishment, it is indisputable that Advanced DNA testing lends support and credibility to the accuracy and integrity of capital verdicts. In short, we are in a better position than ever before to ensure that not only that only the guilty are executed. All Americans, supporters and opponents of the death penalty alike, should recognize that DNA testing pr provides a powerful safeguard in capital cases. We should be thankful for this amazing technological development. In showing all of this, not only do people support the death penalty, but considering the op option of letting a maximum security prisoner live just isn't worth the risk. It is worth it, however, to ensure that a convict can never and will never attack anyone again, and to give closure to the families that were affected by them. An eye for an eye makes a whole world blind. This famous quote by civil rights activist Mahatma Gandhi has a large correlation with the sensitive subject of capital punishment. Capital punishment, more commonly known as the death penalty, is a legal process whereby a person is put to death by the state as punishment for a crime. Capital punishment has been used for years by numerous nations for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> the use of the death penalty in the United States has been steadily declining in recent years. The death penalty is now largely isolated to only a small handful of states, states which actively use it. Despite the, this diminished use, the flaws and failure of the death penalty are more apparent than ever. Key problems with the death penalty include racial bias, innocence, and cost to just name a few. Death, sentence to, death sentences are imposed in a criminal justice system that treats you better if you are rich and guilty than if you are poor and innocent. Death is unusually severe punishment unusual in its pain and in, and in its enormity. The Bill of Rights, in the Bill of Rights, one can interpret that the death penalty violates the Eighth Amendment. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. A second chance should be given in life before a death penalty. There is no evidence that the death penalty is more effective than long-term punishment. Some states abolished the death penalty because it was harsh and unusual. Not only that, but some people were found innocent after they were sentenced to death. We 
talk, with the talk of capital punishment comes a politically altered word of retribution. Retribution is just another word for revenge. To kill the other, to kill the person who has killed someone close to you, is simply to continue the violence. The statement that execution somehow gives closure to a tragedy is a myth. Give me one second. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, 10 minutes question. Uh, you may begin. All right, so you stated in your opening statement that the rate of, or the number of states that have capital punishment is declining rapidly, and there's only a small amount still. Are you aware that 32 states still use capital punishment, it's still legal, so that's still the majority of America? Here's so what we had before, yes, it is declined, that still is a lot. But states are trying to make um, an effort to get rid of capital punishment. And a lot of states still have it, but they don't use it. Yeah, he, I don't think he necessarily means that the number of states is declining, it's the use in the states. Um, are you, you said that every um, prisoner deserves a second chance in life, but the, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, but then you also talked about life in prison. So, how are they really getting a second chance in life if all they're doing is sitting in prison? They have, prisoners have um, certain ways they can improve the lives of others. They can um, get an education. They can attend, they can um, become close with our religious, with um, their religious um, beliefs. They can also help others to stay out of prison by giving speeches and such to, um, deter other people from committing heinous crimes. And something that I'm going to gonna mention later in my closing statement, there's a man named Stanley Williams, and while imprisoned, he like acted as an anti-gang activist and wrote a children's book, and he was even awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Stanley took Williams under the crypt. So thank you. Okay. Guys, give his hand right. Okay, um, you said that one of the things they can do while they're in prison is help others deter from crimes, correct? As I'm talking about, um, usually if there are kids in juvenile detention, they will um, give certain speeches telling them to, you know, get your life back, get your life together, get it straight, and that can scare those kids straight, which can help them out. Sure. Statistical evidence shows that it should improve at all. No, I'm just saying from what I've read, what I've um, what I know. That people have done really well. okay. um, You also said that there is a large chance or a chance that um, innocents are executed. That has been shown in the past, however, with new DNA studies that are over 99% accurate. How, how do you think that? It's not necessarily common, but not every crime has DNA testing. Sometimes you still have to rely on eyewitnesses, and that's not always correct. Um, another thing you mentioned is the cost. Are you aware where most of these costs come from for the death penalty? Mm -hmm. The pockets of American taxpayers. Okay, no, I mean like the cost of the like death penalty as a whole. Like, well, on average it's 2.2 .2 million for an execution. Mm -hmm. Are you aware why it's so expensive? Because the trials cost more because they have to try it try twice, once to see if they're guilty and once for the punishment. And then it costs a lot more in death row because there's higher security. Exactly. So you have two different trials. So you're looking twice, A, to see if the person committed the crime that they're on trial for, and B, to see if they um, deserve capital punishment. So the, by doing that, you are ensuring, again, that less innocent people are actually executed, are actually receive this capital punishment. Um, you talked before about um, education. Uh, one of the things that we had found is that while they may be sitting in life in prison, they can educate themselves, not only on their religion or other kinds of education, but on, I mean, our justice system as it is. They can learn um, different things, and by doing this, they can constantly make different appeals while they're sitting in life in prison, to the point where the cost of life in prison could be equal to the amount of capital punishment. And let's see what else. Um, so again, going um, back to the long drawn process. Um, are you?
you aware of the um, problem with overcrowding in prisons? Yeah. Okay. Are you aware that in the United States, um, nearly one in every hundred American adults is incarcerated? Oh crap. So you're trying to say kill people to make the population of prison smaller? Is that I'm it? saying crime is punishment. <laughs> okay, so continue. But well, we don't really kill enough people to make that much more space in prison. Yeah. Since the declining, like we mentioned, since the use of capital punishment is declining, it's not going to. Um, this year alone, in 2015, we've had seven executions already. Okay, that's seven that? people who have been taken out of prisons in the United States. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, we had 35. It's been, it has been declining. However, it's yes. still so alive. It's seven. not. So there's, 30, that, right? there's 32 states that implement the death penalty, but only 35 uses. That's almost like one in exactly. each state because it's for the only, whole entire year. So yeah, exactly. It's only used by the most heinous crimes. So what does this relate to overpopulation? Because there is a big problem with overcrowding in prisons, and by having people just sitting in life so in prison. So you're racist to kill the people. And, is that what you're saying? And one person in each state is going to make a huge difference in the prison. 35 people. How many people sit in a maximum security prison? You know that? Yeah, I hope.